Welcome back, Sebastian here. So today, uh, second video in my series looking at each Formula E team after season nine of Formula E, which of course just concluded uh, last weekend uh, with the London e Prix. So today I'm gonna to be looking at Nissan and their customer team, McLaren. So since McLaren finished eighth and Nissan seventh, I'll be talking about McLaren fifth uh, first as I kind of work my way up the team's championship order. So for McLaren, uh, technically their first year in Formula E, uh, their two drivers this year were Hughes and Rast. Uh, Hughes uh, won it on the points battle, 48 to 40. Uh, in the race head to head, however, uh, it was Rast who finished ahead, six to five, in favor of Rast. Uh, looking at average finishing position, this was in favor of Hughes, 10.6 for Hughes and 11.4 for Rast, but still pretty close. Uh, qualifying head-to-head, -head, dead even. I was actually very surprised at this looking uh, when I was doing the research for this video. Um, I figured that since Hughes had, uh, I believe, two pole positions and quite a few really high starts, uh, he would have easily won this, but actually it wasn't the case. Uh, eight to eight in favor of, uh, yeah, basically a eight tie. Uh, the qualifying gap, uh, 0.003 advantage for Rast. Uh, and actually when I was looking at the data for this, uh, it seemed that uh, I think for, even though it's a dead average, it includes one race where Hughes crashed out of qualifying the Rome Epre. I think race one for that. Uh, but just in general, it felt like uh, Hughes was a, the better qualifier through the year, uh, but there was races where he was very far off the pace and he'd be almost out qualified by almost a second by rest. Uh, in my power rankings, both drivers uh, in the bottom 10, on average, 14.5 for Rast and 15.1 for Hughes. I felt that uh, Rast perform Rast's performances were a bit stronger at the start of the year uh, when the car was a bit more capable of getting uh, higher points finishes. But that being said, I think both drivers had a fair number of crashes and incidents with other drivers, which is why they're both pretty low. Uh, just looking at McLaren's history, of course, even though this is their first year, uh, they effectively took over the old Mercedes works team. Uh, so 2020, 157 points for Mercedes, uh, third in the Constructors, a uh, pretty decent year. That was their first year after they took over from HWA. 2021, 187 points, first in the Constructors, first team's championship. 2022, massive jump in points, 319, and again, first in the team's championship. Uh, of course, this is kind of, uh, 2022 was the first year where they kind of changed the qualifying format to the duals format that we have now. And then 2023, uh, Mercedes kind of leave Formula E and McLaren become a customer team to Nissan, 88 points and eighth in the team's championship. Now taking a look at the Nissan works team, two drivers, Norman Nato, Sasha Fenestras, uh, 63 points for Nato, 32 points for Fenestras. Uh, race head to head seven to five in favor of Nato, so pretty close and a bit closer than the points total uh, would show. Average finishing position, 9.7 for Nato and 11.9 for Fenestras. So a bit of a gap there. Uh, qualifying head to head though, uh, Fenestras was the better driver in qualifying this past year. Uh, nine to six uh, qualifying head to head and 0 0.154 in favor of Fenestras. So about a tenth, of a tenth and a half of a second. Power ranking average, 13.2 for Fenestra, 16.5 for Nato. Now it would seem a bit strange that the driver who did better in my power rankings uh, had way less points than the driver uh, who finished below them. But I was looking at my power rankings and I think the reality is that I think through about almost two thirds of the season up until I would say Jakarta, uh, Nato was not really showing that much pace, uh, was quite slow in the races, even if he did have a couple good qualifying performances, wasn't really getting the points. Fenestras had quite a few good points, uh, qualifying, uh, qualifying sessions. The races he were, was pretty decent, a couple of them. Uh, Cape Town comes to mind, Monaco comes to mind. But then there were also races where things would just happen outside of his control. Uh, so I did feel like through the majority of the season, Fenestras was the better driver, but very late on, Rome, London, uh, even Portland to an extent, uh, Nato was the much better driver. And I think that, for example, that podium, uh, in Rome, that would have given him 18 points, would have given him almost a third of his points that he got in the whole season. So, uh, and very similar, honestly, for Nato went to his uh, first year in Formula E a couple years ago, uh, was pretty much nowhere through the most of the season, and then suddenly won 
uh, the final one of the final races of the season out of nowhere. Of course, helped by the qualifying format back then. Now looking at Nissan in the uh, teams and their history, uh, of course, prior to this year, it was effectively Nissan powertrains run by EDAMs. So the DAMS, old Renault EDAMs team that had been in Formula E since the very beginning, uh, kind of dropped out and it became the full Nissan works team. So 2020, 167 points, second in the constructors, I honestly did not, or the team's championship, uh, I honestly did not remember that, uh, but that being said, it was a really chaotic year. 2021, 97 points, massive drop in points and drop all the way to 10th in the team's championship. Really rough year, I remember for both Wemmy and Gunther, who were their drivers that year. Uh, 2022, 36, oh no, Roland, Roland Wemmy, yes. And then 2022, 36 points, ninth in the team's championship. Uh, massive drop in the points, even though they moved up one position. Uh, and yes, I believe their drivers were Wemmy and Gunther, and a really rough year for both drivers. 2023, uh, of course, a big improvement, 95 points. Uh, and seventh in the team's championship. So best finish in the team's championship since 2020. Uh, so that would have been season six. Yeah, season six, I believe. And uh, best points total since uh, 2021, which was, of course, with the uh, wacky qualifying format. So that's my look at McLaren and Nissan. I think the other thing that I wanted to mention was that I remember doing a video, uh, like, I don't know, March, March-ish, and they, uh, McLaren had, at that point, McLaren were doing pretty well. They got a lot of their points early in the year. Nissan were really struggling, especially in the races. And I feel like in the second half of the season, that really flipped. Uh, Nissan improved quite a bit in the races, or at least Nato improved quite a bit in the races. And I felt that McLaren's definitely uh, kind of fell off as the year went along. So interesting to see how their fortunes basically kind of reversed uh, through the year, despite using the same powertrain. But yeah, so that's my look at Nissan and McLaren uh, for season nine of Formula E. And of course, I'll be continuing in a couple of days' time looking at uh, DS Penske and Maserati. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.